At some stage in your sculpting, you're going to need a nice, clean, retopologized model. I do it a lot in ZBrush with ZRemesher, but not everybody has access to that. So if you're working in Nomad, you, you don't have a way to do a clean retop. Now, if you want to get something that's got that clean edge flow, then you need a program called Instant Meshes, and it's free. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about it in this video, and it's basically a few clicks away, and you can get a really nice, clean, flowing model. So let's dive right in, take a look at Instant Meshes, and see if it works for you. So I've got my nice sculpt, um, doesn't matter where it came from, whether it's Nomad, ZBrush, Blender, wherever you get your sculpt from, and you want a nice, clean, retopologized base mesh for it. So we'll take this uh, Machiriceratops, which is um, part of a project that I'm working on at the moment, and we're, what we'll do is we'll generate a nice low polygon mesh that we can use in all of those different programs. Now, if I was in ZBrush, I could do it with ZRemesher, I could do it by hand in um, here in Blender, with with lots of various plugins that you can get but it's nice just to have a, a kind of one-click solution to give you a nice base mesh something along the lines of this so it's it's not as accurate as I would get if I did it by hand but it gives me a lot of what I need and there's a very very quick way of doing that with something called instant meshes so if you jump onto github and just uh, this address here, which I'll copy down below in the uh, in, in the description, and then just do a quick search for instant meshes. You'll find this, and there's lots of information about it, and it's a very very powerful little piece of, of programming. Um, uh, you know, and there's lots you can read in there. And if you don't if you don't really know a lot about this subject, then I'd suggest you go and research this in this in this website. Um, but what you would want is this bit here. So just download the, presuming you're on Windows, get Windows, Mac if you've got Mac, etc. And then you just get a little executable file and then just run that and then you're straight away, you're up and running with instant meshes. And instant message is, it's very complex, but very easy, which is, there's a lot of terminology in here that I won't cover because it's not for, for, for the faint hearted unless, unless you've done some research into, into what a lot of this means. So where possible, I'm just gonna focus on the buttons to press to get your, your nice clean mesh out. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is open up a mesh. So just import the model that you've got. And I've got one that's, it's about a quarter of a million. So it's it's been decimated to a, to a reasonable level. Um, and that's the same model, just just a quarter of a million polygons. Now, if you look up here and look at advanced, there are a couple of things. I would leave most of this alone until you're until you're familiar with it. But there's a couple of things I'd want you to have a look at. So you, you're obviously seeing the input mesh, which is the, is your mesh. You can have a look at your wireframe, and as you can tell, it's triangulated like crazy. It's a it's a nasty mesh. And whether this has come from um, Dyn Topo from Blender or a, or a Dynamesh from, from uh, ZBrush or from a, a Voxel remesh in um, Nomad, it doesn't really matter. It, ta it takes anything um, that, that, that you want to throw at it, really. Um, so turn that wireframe off. But here's something you could look at, which is these are the face IDs and the vertex IDs. So if you don't know what these are, I just thought I'd explain it. So every single number you can see there is an identifying number for each of the points in your model. So if you ever wonder how much math is going on to create this Machiaceratops, well, that's that's what's going on. So every point of every, so each, I mean, this is triangulated at the moment, so there's, each triangle's got three points, one at each edge, each vertex, at one at each point, and then each of them has data. So obviously, you know, if if you do this for a living and you're and you're used to 3D, you'll know that, but if you, it's, it, it always blows people's minds when I show them that for the first time, that, you know, that, that is calculating that model um, on a per vertex level, um, all the time so that's incredible if you think about it. just just thinking about that is crazy so we'll turn that off we don't need to know any of that um, and then most of this I, I, I would leave alone you've got an output mesh here but because we haven't done anything yet you can't see it so other than that leave advanced alone um, and you've got a, a thing here where you can have uh, on, under remesh as triangles quads or another version of quads and I'm going to leave it just at, I don't want triangles, so I'll leave it at 
quad four by four like that. And that's that's the way I've done most of, of the ones that I've done. I leave configure under the configuration details. I don't put a crease on because you have to reload the model. So we don't want to do that. And I'm not overly sure what align to boundaries means in this context, so I've left that alone. But what I do understand is this bit, which is target vertex count. Now it says 22,000, and just with a lot of these algorithms in, in programs like um, ZBrush and Blender, you you won't get what you put in. So if you ask for 5,000, um, a vertex count of 5,000, you won't get 5,000. It'll just have a go, and it'll it'll spit out as close as it can get with the, with the parameters you give it. So five's probably a little bit too low, so we'll just go we'll go a little bit higher. We'll go seven or eight, something or even nine now. We'll try nine and just see what we get. And then this is the fun bit now, so because because you move on to the next section, and this is where you can see these tools here, which is um, the first one that you want to try is this one. And this is like a comb. So if you uh, solve the, 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 the model, what it tries to do is tell you where it's going to put your topology. Now, if you look at these little stripy colored lines, they, they don't look very good. Incidentally, turn that back off if you want to move the model around. While that's activated, you're not gonna be able to move it around. You just get to, to, to draw on it. So what, what you're looking at is the approximation of where the geometry is going to go. And as you can see, if you think about geometry and you look at those colored lines, that's going to be a pile of garbage because it's just arbitrarily slapped a load of lines on it. So what we need to do is this button, which basically says orientation comb, making local adjustments to the orientation field. So we hit that. And then what I tried to do is draw what I think would be a nice set of uh, indicators for the uh, topology. Now, I just did that one and it was a little bit random and nothing's happened. So depending on the size of your model and how much, uh, you know, what your system is like and, and how much information you give it, you, you, you might get it not working. So don't do, you know, lines that go all the way through the model, I'll just delete them, will not be that successful. So what you want to try and do is just build it up in localized areas. So for example, I might want to do around this major muscle at the back end of the thigh there, I might want to just put a line and that just gives me the flow going round there. You can see it instantly there. I can't turn it round without turning it off. So I'll do a few and then we'll turn it around. I'll do one around the shoulder blade here and that changes that flow. And then if you look now down the middle, that's given us a nice flow from top to bottom around the, the, the rib cage. So that's working well already. Now this leg is going all over the place, the back leg, so I'm going to draw a line right from the spine, through the knee, down through the calf, and down onto the foot. And just watch how it changes the orientation. Now, So now you've got a flow that's going to go right the way down through there. The same with the front leg, but then pull it back a bit, as if because this is the, 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 the way that the, the uh, scapula is going to go. So you, you're looking for a flow. And you see I went too far then, it probably didn't do probably um oops got rid of one that i liked then i have to redo that one it probably went too far and what, what i would have been better is just doing the flow like that and then the flow like that and then it just tweaks it like that let's get this neck working right so we probably will have to get a bit closer now so i'm just going to turn it off and move it around so you can zoom in and out with the with the mouse wheel roll and you can use right click if you're using a mouse um, to, to, to give you a pan around like this. So thinking of the front now, let's get the comb back on, come round the frill, because I'd like it to indicate this frill, and I'm gonna go right to the corner of the mouth, and that'll change that completely now. I want to come round here with the jaw, so that'll change that, and then I'm gonna put a couple of indications of the eye. Now, it doesn't do a brilliant job, I found, um, in that area. Um, this next bit, the singularity attractor, I have tried that and it has made some difference sometimes. It, it can uh, help you. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't even know what that actual, al you know, what that part of the algorithm does. But sometimes I have had, had some success with that. If you switch it on like so, you can see there it's giving you an indication. Um, and I probably need to read up on that to see if I can get some really nice edge flow around things like eyes. But... Currently, we'll just focus on what we know. Um, so let's turn that off and we'll spin it around. Now this is a non-symmetrical model, so I have to do all of that again 
on this side. So let's just do it a bit quicker this time. Now we've we, we, we've we've got we've got an idea of what we're doing. So I'm going to indicate down through the tail, over the back end of the top of the, the, the top of the pelvis, down onto the thigh, calf, foot, over the belly, around the front shoulder. And then I want to really make sure this neck is is lined up for the for the waddle underneath. And then rotate, turn it off again, rotate it around. And let's get this front end looking good. So we want to comb back on. Get this looking good. Up to the crown, up to the horn, round the eye. I put two round the eye, around the jaw. Now, in a lot of a lot of creatures, I would want a, um, a loop around the the top to the bottom. You know, the, the the lip would come round in the middle here. But on a Triceratops, of uh, you know, it, because it's got this horned bit at the here, and, and the jaw is just very much just a, an open and close angle. I, I've not really had a problem with with not having a contiguous loop there. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. Uh, then you can switch that off, so you can have a final look just to make sure nothing's changed. And then we'll see what 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 that's yielded, and see if that's given us something uh, like we need. So just bring it into frame like that. So first of all, I'll hit solve there, and it'll resolve everything based on that information. And then I'm going to use um, th this here on the next bit, the position field. Basically, if we hit that, um, we we don't need to do any of these next bits. So. That, that's pretty much a, a, exactly the same as, as I've done then. It's given me an indication of, of what I'd already drawn. So I just hit solve on the second one. And it gives me this, which is it's now having a good look at um, uh, what it's going to suggest as, a, uh, as your topology. Now, if at this point it looks like it's going to be too low polygon, then this isn't your geometry. Obviously, this is an approximation. And um, you can see around the eye, it's going to have a go. The jaw is going to follow as much as it can. Um, the hips uh, have worked. That's given us a nice flow around there and around the front shoulder. So we're almost there with it, really. It's not. It's not giving me any, you know, really scary um, results at this stage. But if you want to, click this back on and go and have a go with the edge brush and just make it a little. You know, if you feel that that's not enough, go in and tweak that, and you'll see. On, on this setting, you'll see the, um, the the actual shape of the geometry rather than the suggestion will change. And, and I can sometimes spot errors like there. I can see that it doesn't flow up well onto the, like that, didn't flow up well through the woggle, so I'd miss that bit. Um, and I might want to think about a jawline like there, for example, so that'll retweak that. And then that's pretty much it, really. We're almost we're almost ready to calculate the mesh now. It looks it looks good enough to me. So the next port, next pit here is export mesh. And before we export it, we want to have a look at it. So let's have a look at the extract mesh. And there you go. So that's giving you uh, quite a nice uh, low polygon mesh that's got more than an, enough detail in it for you to start it as a mesh. You can you can UV that now even if you want to in, in Blender or in whatever your other program is. But that gives you pretty much everything you want. Look out for things like this where it's lost a little bit of detail there because that'll cause you a problem. Um, so you, you're going to want to go back and fix that. So it's just a case of going back in, maybe up in the polygon count a little bit, or maybe just, just try and paint a little bit up the horn to try and get it to hold that volume. But they're the only kind of problems I, I, I've encountered with, with, with this software. I find it incredibly useful. And what comes out is what you've already seen in Blender. And, and if it comes out in Blender, then all you would need to do is take this into Nomad, and you could sculpt the, you know, increase the resolution and do a normal high poly, low poly workflow from this mesh. So this is super useful for anyone doing my T-Rex course, and it's super useful for anyone who just wants to improve their workflow with a bit of retopology, um, but they don't want to go to the expense of something like ZBrush or a more dedicated system. One thing I will point out is when you come to save it, 
So name it whatever you want to name it. But with this software, you can export a PLY, which you won't want to, and an OBJ, which is a modeling um, format that's very, very common and been around for a long time. But you have to actually put the file extension. So you do have to actually put .obj on it or it won't, it'll throw up an error. So um, just remember that when you when you come to export it. So this is our second course following on from the iPad Beginners Sculpting course and where that focused on the basics of how to sculpt on an iPad and how to make your first character, this one is firmly about creature design, namely the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The course isn't for absolute beginners so you need to have either taken our first basics course or at least know the basics of how to use Nomad Sculpt or in fact any 3D sculpting package would be a bonus. I'll teach you how to add references, block out a full creature with simple primitives, then mesh that together and begin the initial stages of sculpting. We move on to secondary forms and how to build up muscle groups and main bony landmarks on a dinosaur. In this video, we're starting to look at workflow techniques and specifically for iPad sculpting, where we don't have all the tools and features of a deskbound system. I'll cover off primary and secondary and tertiary forms and also take a look at a routine I like to use where you're always clear whether you're in creation or refinement mode and what that actually means. We're providing the main Nomad Sculpt files so that you can either use them as a reference, assist you if you're struggling with any part of the course, and of course you could just 3D print them and who doesn't want a dinosaur on their desk? We've included all the alpha images that we use throughout the course in a pack of 50 skin and scale alphas. Two bonus videos give you a glimpse of how to retopologize in ZBrush using ZRemesher and a 40 minute painting session with Procreate where we take a look at how to use exported Nomad images. It's packed full of useful tips and tricks and it's structured to allow you to follow along at your own pace. There's also a bundle option if you think you need to go back to the basics before tackling the big guy. And that's all available right now.